This is an extract from a short story about a new mother, and it may or may not be a supernatural tale, and it's called Night Feeder. It's dark again. I must have fallen asleep on the chair. The hissing from the baby monitor fills my head. There's no noise coming from the baby, but I feel I should check on him. I go to his room. The Moses basket is lit by the orange glow of the monitor, and I can see he's wide awake, lying there, his eyes black and glittering. He seems to be looking straight at me. It's almost as if he's going to speak and say something like, oh, hello. I pick him up and unwrap his swaddling. He clings to me with his thin little arms and legs. I undo my nightdress and put him to my breast. The pain in my breast gradually subsides as he drains me and he feeds for what must be over an hour. He's still sucking, but I know there's no more milk. So I go to put him in the basket, but he keeps clinging to me. I try to pull him off, but he won't budge. I pull harder and still he grips, his arms and legs digging into my torso. I pull again, and this time I give a little jerk as I do so. This dislodges him and I quickly put him down. He wriggles and squirms and I can feel the muscles moving under his skin as I fold the sheet tight around his body. Because he's struggling, it's hard to do this properly. And one arm thrusts upwards from the swaddling, the fingers outstretched and feeling in the air towards me. I push the arm back down by his side and hold it there hard as I wrap the sheet more firmly this time. He doesn't make any noise while I do this, and once he's tightly swaddled, he shuts his eyes. I go through to my bedroom and lie down. I've taken the monitor receiver with me, and I place it on my bedside table. The monitor amplifies and compresses any noise that it picks up. A car passing by the front drive sounds like a prowling animal. The sheep in the field sound too close, as if a flock of them are gathered underneath the baby's window, looking up. I lie on the sheets listening to the monitor. It constantly hisses now that everything is silent, as if thousands of sound particles are moving restlessly against each other, waiting for the chance to configure into some other, more solid noise. I can't sleep, so I go downstairs for a drink of water. I switch on the kitchen light and catch sight of my reflection in the dark window. My skin looks very pale and my nightdress hangs, shapeless and stained. I switch off the light. I stand there until my eyes become accustomed to the gloom. Now, through the window, I can see the moonlit landscape beyond. The fields are soft grey shapes and above them is a smudge of moon. The trees are black silhouettes against the sky. The reservoir gleams like mirrored glass. Maybe I could open the window, climb out and disappear. There's a movement close to my body. There's something shifting in the dark. Everything slows as the darkness solidifies around me. Something is pacing around the edges of the room. There's something in here watching me. I force myself to move and I run out of the kitchen, up the stairs and get back into bed. I shouldn't be so stupid. There's nothing to be scared of. It's just because I'm tired. It's early morning. I must have dropped off. I check on the baby, but he's still asleep, so I go downstairs and make myself a coffee. The light streams in through the kitchen window as I load the washing machine. Now he's woken, I can hear him crying. But when I go upstairs to feed him, he refuses and just cries more loudly. I look at an old magazine and try to read an article, but he's still crying, and I can't concentrate. I can't have slept for longer than three hours at a time since he was born. When he's at his loudest, I can hear both the cry through the monitor and the real cry from the room. The screams layered as if there were two babies. It's just a little thing, and maybe it's only in my head because everything is so overwhelming. But sometimes I've seen him looking at his fingers, and he's so focused, so completely absorbed. Newborn babies aren't meant to be able to focus on things, but he definitely can, I'm sure. Maybe it's a good thing, I don't know. He's looking at me at the moment. I'm back in his room. He seems satisfied now that I've come to check on him. I hope he realises I'm doing the best I can. There's a hum in the air, maybe from the washing machine downstairs. I've got a damp cloth in my hand, and I run it over the windowsill, the dust felting together in a dark mass of hair and debris. I should try to feed him again. 
I sit on the bed and unbutton my shirt, and I put them to my breast. His tongue thrusts against my nipple, and I try to think of something else, to think of them not being on my body like this. Then, he bites, but he doesn't have teeth. I put my finger in his mouth to prise him off my nipple. It takes a few seconds to unhook his clamped jaw, and I have to apply a little more force than I thought I would. His jaw releases with a click and a wet sucking mush. Milk spurts out from my nipple all over his face and he squeals with rage. My entire breast sings with pain. It must have been his guns. I try to put him on the other breast, but he refuses by clamping his mouth shut and turning his head away. I'm relieved and place him back in the basket. I cover myself. I'll try again, later. Thank you.